Hey guys, welcome back. Joe Brunsman, insurance broker to the stars. Today we are talking about crypto jacking. First news story here, this is from April 8th. Attackers conducting crypto jacking operation against U.S. education organizations. This one here from April 14th. Cyber criminals are installing crypto jacking software on unpatched Microsoft Exchange servers. You'll see the quote there in the headline. It's basically free money rolling in for the attackers. Next, Docker Hub images downloaded 20 million times come with crypto miners. Now, what actually is crypto jacking? We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about why you should care and some additional considerations for you. So generally, it's just using somebody else's computer to mine for a cryptocurrency. I'm not going to really delve into what mining is here uh, because it's somewhat irrelevant to this conversation. But suffice to say, they're using somebody else's computer for that. They could be using it for really any type of cryptocurrency, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, uh, Monero, all the privacy coins tend to be very popular with this. Now, also, generally speaking, there's no immediate theft of data. So it's not like they're going in and uh, stealing, say, social security numbers, driver's license numbers. But they may steal credentials just to spread that malware around the system or to other systems. Now, with that, you may still have to prove that the access did not necessarily lead to an acquisition of any data on your system. That could facilitate some type of forensic analysis to actually get that done. Now, why is all of this so bad? Well, there's a number of reasons. It's not just as simple as, hey, uh, this looks bad. I'm going to go ahead, restore from backups or remove that offending piece of malware and just go about my day. One, you do have a network intrusion. Uh, I'm not giving official legal or insurance advice here, but you need to think of this as a network intrusion, which means you may need to get forensics involved. You may need to get an attorney involved. And this could be considered a claim under your insurance policy, which we'll talk about here in a sec. It can also lead to some other issues. One is slow computers or system speeds. It could lead to overheating and or cooling failures. So both within PCs, it could lead to overheating or system failures for laptops, uh, tablets, servers, PCs, everything you have inside of your business there. That in turn could lead to expensive hardware replacements and of course the excessive utility bill. So at least on the front end, probably the most likely way you're going to see this is all of a sudden you have a huge jump in your electricity bill and you're going, where did this come from? Why am I now spending say three, four times what I did last month on electricity when this may actually be the reason for that? Now, how does this actually happen? Well, there's really two primary Two primary methods, excuse me. One is the victim just gets tricked into loading the crypto mining software onto their system and two, injecting script into a website. Now, what are some of the basic defenses against this? First is going to be security awareness training. You don't want anybody downloading malware onto your system. I'd say as far as malware goes, getting some type of crypto jacking malware is probably the best you can hope for, but you can't really know what you're downloading until you do some type of network monitoring solution, monitoring your website for malicious code. And ultimately, you just need to talk to your MSP or your internal IT guy uh, to really see if this is an issue for you, if this is something you're concerned about. If you have a lot of physical assets out there that could be impacted by a crypto jacking event, now is probably a pretty good time to start that conversation to see, okay, how do we try and avoid this? How do we detect this? And what happens if ultimately this does get into our system? Now, the insurance side of it, obviously, you need to read your own insurance policy. This is just an example for you. And this is something where you kind of have to follow the bouncing ball and make sure that you actually know what you're covered for. So here you'll see inside the policy, it said crypto jacking means unauthorized use or access to the computer system by a third party to mine cryptocurrency or any other digital or electronic currency. Now, within that, so now you, you see crypto jacking is defined, where could that actually be covered? Well, that in this particular policy could be covered under utility fraud. So it means the unauthorized use or access to your computer system by a third party, including but not limited to crypto jacking or other telephone fraud that results in a utility overage. So then you're like, okay, well, what's utility overage? Follow the bouncing ball means an increase in expenses incurred by you resulting from the unauthorized use of any of the following services or resources. And then I just pulled out electricity there. There's a bunch of other uh, listed utilities. But packing this all together, what's this really saying? It's saying that, hey, if someone installs crypto jacking software on your system, which could trigger utility fraud, so then you need to look at the utility overage 
uh, specific section within the policy to say, okay, if I have a huge jump in my electricity bill, a cyber policy may actually respond to that type of claim. Now, what does a crypto jacking event cost? Well, there's a lot that can actually go in to a crypto jacking event that I don't think a lot of businesses really consider. So one is the cost to remove the malware. So now we're talking about potentially forensics, uh, dealing with some potential contractual issues. So I have seen contracts where just even any access of a system, even if there's no uh, knowledge or allegation of acquisition of data, still could trigger some type of contractual issue for that business. Lost employee productivity. So imagine if all of your employees' computers were suddenly operating at you know, 50% speed now you've got a problem with inside of your business. It's very hard to calculate that. Reputational damage could be in there. Damaged hardware, that could get really expensive for you depending upon how you're set up and how many devices could potentially uh, fall victim to this or be damaged with this. Just the wear and tear on your system. So spinning up those servers, say, to like 100% and just running those every single weekend when no one's in the office, just heating those things into oblivion and then cooling them down and heating them back up again, you know, that thermal shock that you're going to experience there within servers really can lessen the lifespan of that type of equipment. Of course, the increased utility costs, in this case, generally electricity bills that start going through the roof. What does all this actually total up to? It really just depends. But suffice to say, it's enough that you should probably consider having this in your cyber insurance policy if appropriate. Now with that, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. This is my book, Damage Control, Cyber Insurance and Compliance. That is where you can download it for free. And like, comment, subscribe. New videos come out every single Thursday. Stay safe.